Hi guys, I can't believe I haven't made this video yet because people ask me all the time in the comments, what lens should they buy for the little ZV-E10 or any Sony APS-C camera? And without a doubt, my number one suggestion is the Sigma 16mm f1.4. In fact, you're looking at the lens right now. That's what I'm shooting with. And how am I doing that and holding it here? Because I have two of them. Let's talk about it. You see, this is the Sigma 16mm f1.4 for my GH5. It's a micro four thirds. This lens is available for the Sony E mount, for the Leica L mount, and the Canon M mount as well. And if you have any of the mounts that I just mentioned, you should get this lens because this is the best value lens of all time, in my opinion. The quality coming out of this thing is second to none, and it's only $399 right now at BNH as of November 7th, 2021. Now, why is it such a good value? Because it allows your crop sensor cameras, whether it's a micro four thirds or an APS-C style sensor, it allows those cameras to compete with the big boys because you have a 1.4 aperture on this thing. So it lets in a 1.4 amount in terms of light. In terms of full frame equivalence field of view, it is a 24 mil on an APS-C sensor and about a 32 mil on a micro four thirds sensor. And the uh, depth of field is about a 2.1 on the APS-C and a 2.8 on the micro four thirds. It took me a while to double 1.4 in my head because I am not bright. So over here on my little Dougie, I have basically a 24 millimeter lens, but you know, this field of view is actually about a 35 millimeter. And the reason is, is because on the ZV-E10, if you press active steady shot, that crops in on your sensor. And a lot of people don't like that crop when they're outside trying to vlog. But when you have a 16 mil that turns into a 24 mil and you use the, uh, the cropping for the active steady shot, you get about a 35 millimeter, which is perfect for the studio. That is a hack I have in my ZV-E10 hack videos. I'll link that up here somewhere if you want to check that out. I think it's fantastic. I don't lose any quality because I'm actually cropping in on the sensor. I'm still getting delicious 4K with uh, no fuzziness and uh, get more focal length out of my favorite lens. And so this low f-stop will get you that nice blurry background that everybody is looking for, especially on the YouTubes. All of the uh, things I've done about the stability, anytime I'm outside, I'm using the 16 mil on the ZV-E10 on a tripod or a Gorillapod, something like that. And it gives you a good vlogging length, especially if you don't crop in. And I don't crop in because I use Catalyst Brows to make my footage look extra smooth. And uh, photos, don't forget photos. You can take brilliant photos with this thing. The color rendition is fantastic. It's just, look at it. There's so much glass in this thing. And, uh, the, and this is high quality glass. It's a great build. It's got a smooth focus ring right here. No bells, no whistles, just excellent quality at a great price that turns crop sensor bodies into really, really usable cameras in many situations, like low light. A lot of people complain that the crop sensor, they wanna go full frame because they want better conditions for low light shooting. And uh, guess what a 1.4 gets you? Whole lot of light on your sensor. So you can take your Sony crop sensor, you can take your micro four thirds crop sensor into situations where it would have been all grainy and unusable, but you, because you can let in so much light with this thing, then uh, you can get very, usable footage. And an extra benefit with the Sonys is because this fits all of the Sony E-mount cameras, if you ever take your full frames and you're using the Super 35 crop mode, then uh, you go ahead and you can use this bad boy here. Even when the a7 IV comes out, which I have pre-ordered, if I go into 60 uh, to get the 60p slow motion, that's gonna be a crop sensor anyway. I can use this lens and now I'll have a 1.4 to be able to put on my uh, Sony a7 IV for when I wanna do slow motion. Mm. It also works with the autofocus systems amazingly and it has dead silent focusing. So if I move forward, I stay in focus. If I move back, there's a little box around my eye and it stays 
around my eye is just fantastic. Some lenses, when they autofocus, are super noisy and distracting, and if you have mics close by, like I do, you hear it click, 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 click. Not this one, you can't hear a thing. So what are the drawbacks to this excellent value lens? Well, number one, it's pretty big and heavy. Like, this is the kit lens of the Sony ZV-E10. Now, this isn't really fair, because this is extremely good quality, and this is, uh, it's kinda, okay at best, but look at the size difference between the two. Look at this thing right here. I mean, huh? I don't have product showcase mode on, so I gotta cover up my face. But it, it's quite a bit bigger and it's a nice bit heavier. It's 405 grams. So if you wanna use a gimbal, you might not be able to use a really lightweight gimbal with the ZV-E10 and this lens because it's adding quite a bit of heft. In fact, I think this is almost as heavy as the camera itself. Now, the truth is that's not always bad because when it comes to stabilizing your uh, your photos or your video, having a little extra heft to the camera, it does help eliminate some of that little micro jitter shake. And speaking of stabilization, this thing doesn't have any and it's too bad. That's a good thing to have when it comes, especially for me taking photos. It, uh, it helps me eliminate that uh, camera shake when I have optical stabilization. So it's not uh, the end of the world because I can just raise my shutter speed a little bit, uh, 1 over 250, 1 over 500, and then I can be guaranteed to get sharp photos. And because this thing lets in so much light, I don't mind raising my shutter speed a little bit. Now, when it comes to video, I actually don't use optical stabilization at all because if I'm hand-holding my camera, I am always going through Catalyst Browse. I just did a whole video on that. I always go through Catalyst Browse because the results are so much better on a Sony camera that has gyroscopic data than compared to when you're just using either the, even the camera's IBIS and optical steady shot on some of the more expensive cameras. I still prefer Catalyst Browse and I always use that. And it doesn't have a little button on the side. Sometimes it's nice to have a little button that you can assign something to, like uh, going to manual focus, something like that, so you could do it quickly. I prefer when lenses have that, this one doesn't. But honestly, I'm glad they left all that out if it helped keep the cost down to what it is, which is right now $399, because at the end of the day, what you want is quality glass. It is the most important thing when it comes to cameras, and this is why this is my number one recommendation. They also have a 30 f1.4 and a 56 f1.4. The 56 is really good for portraits, and the 30 is more of a general shooter. It's kind of like a field of view of a nifty 50. So those three lenses from Sigma really, really help turn crop body sensor cameras into really viable competitors to the big boys, and uh, Sigma's actually just contacted me. Well, I, I contacted them, but they agreed to read my email. They are gonna send me their new uh, 18 to 50 F 2.8 for review for you guys, and I think that's a great replacement for the kit lens if it's as good as it looks. So that is another viable option, but that is a 2.8. These other ones from Sigma are a 1.4, and uh, that has really, really helped. Can I say really enough? So that's it. I figured I'd make a video about this thing instead of always answering in the comments, what's your most recommended lens for the ZV-E10? It's this thing right here. And uh, all right, I'm gonna go watch a basketball game. We'll see you soon. Okay, bye-bye. This is really, really, really good apple juice. Really.